I would say that for myself, and I do see this, of course, with all of my clients, the women that I work with, is the biggest challenge is inviting other people to come out and play. Warning, the following presentation is intended for mature audiences. It includes stigma topics like sex, addictions, mental illness, adult dialogue, and strong language. Viewer discretion is advised. I love this lady, Gina Raylene. Oh, I love her to pieces. She's just so amazing, beautiful, intelligent, amazing, all the things. She is a success coach. She's a rebelpreneur. She is a best-selling author and one of the co-founders of Brave Her. And before we get into all the goodness, I would love for you to just tell the women inside the summit just a little bit more about yourself. Sure. Um, so you um, all the th thank you for all the compliments. <laughs> thank you for inviting me to play in your summit. It's awesome. I love this. I love the com the topic that we're going to cover tonight too. Um, I've been um, an entrepreneur pretty much my entire life. I've been in the online space since 2006. Um, as a coach, I've actually done a lot of things. I'm very multi-passionate. I know you heard Kara say uh, that she was very multi-passionate. We certainly share that in common. And um, I've, I've done so much in the online space from writing books to coaching entrepreneurs, to mentorship, to launching franchises, to creating products and programs, to uh, collaborating and partnering with other entrepreneurs and creating stuff with them that it's really difficult sometimes for me to um, introduce myself or to provide a bio. Like when people ask, can you send me your bio? Well, <laughs> and then I have to pick and choose like what to say because I have done a lot, which is really fun. I love entrepreneurship. It is one of my biggest passions. Uh, and I would say uh, the only thing that uh, you might want to know about me is that freedom is my love language. I always say that. And I know Sam loves to talk about the love languages and, uh, and freedom is mine <laughs> as an entrepreneur. Yes, 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 yes. And oh, I have something coming with love languages, which actually includes that. So I'm like super excited to show everyone. It's just like a, a free like um, training that I'm going to be doing, but I'm like so excited because yes, freedom is a new love language that I'm including. So I'm so excited, but so I'm so real. excited to have you here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So hi, Paige. Hi, Lene. Hi, gorgeous ladies. How are you doing? If you are catching the live, please comment and say hello to us because we would love to say hello to your beautiful faces. But I am so ready to get into all the goodness of this interview with you. So Gina, why do you believe it's important for women to build their confidence? Hmm. I think it's so important because confidence is what turns ideas into action. Uh, confidence is what turns dreams into reality. Uh, I believe that when women navigate their true desires, when they dare to make a change, when they step outside of their comfort zone, when they vote themselves in to win, that part's really important. <laughs> when they do that, that's when radical shifts happen, right? That's when books are published, summits are hosted, um, like products and programs are created, like really magical things happen, lifestyles are elevated. And then what happens is ripple effects of possibility influence everyone that you touch. And then you become a role model when you start to activate your confidence, which is super exciting. And it's got this beautiful ripple effect where it starts to pull other women who are watching you along with them. Of course, of course. Hi, Edith. Hello, gorgeous. How are you tonight? Oh, I love your answer. I just... Oh. Oh. I love everything you stand for. And I love that you help other women build their confidence and help them, you know, publish books and do summits. Hi. <laughs> and, and all the goodness that you do, you are just so, so incredible. So the next thing I would love to ask you is what is the most confident thing that you've done? Um, well, you know, it's interesting. I am an introvert. I didn't add that to my like introduction, but um, it's surprising how many things I've actually done. I've been able to do a really good job at uh, being confident and courageous. Not all the time, though, <laughs> like not all the time. But I, I feel like um, initially when I was looking at this, uh, thinking like thinking about this, I was thinking like, what have I done like as an entrepreneur? Because that's really how I show up as the entrepreneur. But I think the most confident thing that I've done recently is move to a new city by myself um, as a result of a 
marriage breakdown, separation, and divorce. Um, like 111% responsible for my own like finances and livelihood and all the things that um, you, you like things like that we used to share, you know, like stopping like, hey, can you pick up a some milk on the way home or like, you know, yeah. shoveling the walk or all the things are now like solely on me. And I think that is the most confident thing that I've done. Um, I did have a cushion. Um, I was able to stay at my sister's and that invitation, I, I stayed there for about a year and a half. And that invitation was just, um, there was, it was open-ended. I, there was not rushed out, but I knew that, um, if I was going to do the things that I really wanted to do with my life that I needed to um, like rip off the bandaid and uh, like take that risk. But one of the things that I've uh, developed as an entrepreneur over the years is just that certainty in my ability to be successful and to create the income and to um, do the things that I really want to do. Yes. Oh my God. I love it. Independence, believing in yourself, all the goodness, all the good things. I just love that. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. It was like scary. It's still scary some days to think that I'm just solely responsible for me. Uh, Cause I haven't been that since I like moved out of home when I was 18. <laughs> right. So it's new and exciting. But, yeah. Yes. And I'm so excited to see where this journey takes you. Cause I know you've already done so many amazing things in your career as an entrepreneur, but I, I, I just have this feeling that because of this, this new step that you've taken, like you said, by moving to a new city by yourself and, and doing all these new things that it's going to catapult you in this new direction somewhere. And I'm just so excited to see where it takes you. I am so here for it. <laughs> <laughs> great, great. So Gina, what is the biggest challenge you faced with creating any sort of collaboration? Well, <laughs> I would say like one of the things that I always say is collaboration is not necessarily for the faint of heart. Like there's a lot of moving pieces, as you well know, Sam. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that for myself, and I do see this, of course, with all of my clients, the women that I work with, is the biggest challenge is inviting other people to come out and play. We, there's this fear. I call it invitation intimidation, and it's a real thing. Uh, and it um, gets in the way of, it just creates so much anxiety around uh, pulling together a collaboration. And in fact, I've seen some collaborations just like fall short because that person just could not get over the fear of rejection. Um, and what I want everyone to understand is that they're actually, it, it's very possible that the, the people you invite to a collaboration will say no. But I want to remove the anxiety and drama from that. <laughs> like if we really get, if we really think about it, even if we went back to childhood um, and we knocked on our friend's door and they can't come out to play, no, I can't, I have to do dishes or no, I can't, I'm grounded or no, I can't, I, um, I don't know, like we have company, like all the things and none of them have anything to do with you. They mm -hmm. just can't come out and play. And very often that is exactly the case for the women who, say no to an invitation to collaborate, like be part of a summit or be part of a, a collaboration book. Like we just published the success rituals volume two. Some of them will say no, and it's okay if you remove the drama, but all of us, my, myself included, we create these stories, the story of no, and what that means. Like, oh, they hate me, or they think my idea is dumb, or I'm doomed to fail, like, right? We, we make such big things. And we, we create that story of no before we even ask. And that's the problem. <laughs> and I, I, I've experienced this, like when I, back in 2009, when I launched, after I launched the International Association of Women in Business Online, I hosted the How Does She Do It Summit. It was about um, comparison, but the positive side of comparison, like how does she do it? Because I want to do that too. And mm -hmm. uh one of the women on my list was Marie Forleo. And if you're in the online space and you're not sure who Marie Forleo is, you like need to know who she is, but she's the author of um, Everything is Figure Outable. That's a common phrase that a lot of people say, but she's, uh, she was one of my, my mentors early on, like early on, she was one of my coaches and mentors. And um, I just was terrified to invite her. Uh, I had a relationship with her. It's not like I was a stranger. 
but I was terrified to invite her. And uh, fortunately, she said yes <laughs> to that summit. And so she participated, but there were a lot of people who said no. And it was okay. The world didn't end, nothing bad happened. But I just remember um, it took forever for me to hit send on that email. And I, I know other women do the same thing. Uh, or what they'll do is they'll completely exclude certain people because they're scared to invite them. And the thing about a collaboration is you want to invite people who are at an elevated level of success than yourself, because that's what's going to pull you forward. Um, one of the reasons people fear that rejection is because of the worry about the no, right? Worry that um, they're not going to see value. But when you understand that every single expert you invite, they were once at zero, or whatever, like maybe you have like 300 subscribers or whatever, whatever you're at, they were there too. And the reality is when it comes to things like summits or all these multi expert collaborations is that they can benefit from being uh, in front of other people's audiences. That's how we grow. That's how we get introduced to new people. So, um, so to just unpack, it's like, be careful of the story of no that you're creating before you even ask. Um, and those big things can't happen unless you're, unless you're willing to ask. And I, I learned that the hard way, like being on the other side of collaborations and thinking, oh, I should have asked so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so, but I, like I chickened out. And so over the years, I've just really developed that, um, recognition of like getting myself out of my head. And, um, the worst thing they can say is not yet, like no is not yes. And, uh, I've removed the drama from all that. Oh, yes, I definitely <laughs> have dealt with that. <laughs> oh, yeah. my gosh. And you're, you're right. Like, if you don't ask, like, the answer will be no, It'll because always you, be no, that's right. Yeah. Like, you have to ask, because if you don't like the answer will always be no, and you'll never know, because they could have potentially said yes. And that was with a couple ladies that I actually asked and I'm like oh like they're gonna say no because I did get some no's already and I'm like they're gonna say no and I'm gonna have to find someone else and they actually said yes and I was like oh um okay like that's really cool <laughs> you know what you'll find over time is this is what has happened to me is like when you're making your list of of people that you want to play with right in a collaboration you really admire them sometimes you're even starstruck by them you're even a little bit intimidated by them um I reached a, a place in my own business where I was reaching out to these people that I was so starstruck by and they were uh, starstruck and, and intimidated by me. And that was like, that's a real cool place to, to, uh, to be elevated to. Uh, that was very surprising, but you'll find that over time as well as you're doing awesome things like this in the online space. Oh, yes. <laughs> totally. And like, even before I decided to do the summit, like people were reaching out to me and they're like, Hey, like, I would love for you to, to like come on my podcast and talk to, talk to my, like my listeners about relationships or whatever. And I'm like, okay, cool. Like you see me as this like expert and I'm like, awesome. Like, I don't, it's not just my audience. It's like people that I don't even know. So, and they like hold you on this pedestal and I'm like, oh, like, that's so cool because I do that to other women and some of the women that I invited to the summit, including yourself. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love this conversation. So what advice or encouragement would you give to someone interested in collaborating with others, like in their industry or creating some sort of collaboration? Oh gosh, I've got so much advice I could give, but I'll stick with, <laughs> I'll just tone it down and stick with um, a concept that I call primed to play. So when you're thinking about a collaboration uh, or in the planning stages, one of the things you want to start doing is, um, well, there's three, three, three pieces I'll share with this, this whole concept of prime to play. You want to first do a bit of a social media audit or social presence audit and make sure that you are someone that other people would want to collaborate with. <laughs> you want to just polish things up a little bit. You want to put um, your best face forward on all of your social platforms um, in, of course, a very authentic and genuine way. Once you've done that, you want to start getting on other people on, the, on their radar. So you want to continue building relationships. Um, 
if you are on their radar, if they are aware of you before you reach out and invite them, they're going to recognize your name when it's in their inbox or in their messenger, or they're, they'll recognize your, your social media profile photo, um, and they're more likely to respond. So those are all good things. And those, um, go, those will increase your confidence around inviting because it's not that whole stranger danger awkward feeling, <laughs> right? Um, uh, the, and then the third piece um, around that would be to, um, I'm having a brain fart here, be someone who is going to add value and increase to their, to their social presence, to their feed. So you're going to love on their posts. And of course, this is doing this without expectation of of anything, right? Like, yes, you have identified them as someone you want to collaborate with, but you're going to be someone of value in their network regardless, right? So you're getting, this also goes back to the idea of, of um, getting on their radar. So you're going to, you know, the, the heart reaction on their posts, you're going to not worry about emojis and gifts. You're going to give heartfelt, genuine comments on their posts that edify their work that congratulate their wins uh, and be someone who they recognize as a cheerleader for them. Uh, you might even recommend them in, in a conversation where you've tagged them and recommended them because of the work that they do. But you really want to start cultivating these relationships. And this is good to do whether you're planning a collaboration or not, because this is going to come back um, and uh, support your own success in really powerful ways. You'll find that people are recommending you for things um, just because you've been a champion to them in the online space. And that's, and that's an exciting place to get to. Yes, I love that. And like, I, I really, really love the part where you're like, even if you're not planning a collaboration, it's still good to like love on other people's content and like show support. And especially with women, like I find that there's not enough of that because we're taught at a very, very young age that other women are a competition. And I yeah. fucking hate that. I hate that with a passion because ultimately we should be working together and building each other up and supporting one another. And that's yeah. exactly what I believe like collaboration is about because I've learned that from you. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Exactly. And that's how you just, you expand your reach, your recognition, your your um, credibility, all the things, and it's how they do as well. And so it becomes this this um, win win scenario that um, it's just it's another concept we don't have necessarily time to get into is just building social equity. Um, so that uh, and when you do that, um, social equity, like when you have these high quality relationships with um, dozens and dozens of other entrepreneurs in the online space, it is like having, if you could write out an insurance policy for success, that's what building positive social equity is. It's like an insurance policy for success. When you have really positive, high social equity, it's almost impossible to fail. Yeah. Yes, that is, that is so great. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so how can women build their confidence by collaboration or collaborating with other entrepreneurs or people in their industry? Yeah, well, I've, I've discovered just from doing dozens and dozens and dozens of collaborations and helping clients to do them as well is that when that women who have business girlfriends to play with, we rise to higher levels of success faster. And we actually have a lot more fun <laughs> as entrepreneurs doing business, right? Mm -hmm. um, there is actually uh, a scientific phenomenon called the girlfriend's effect. And I'll just share one little snippet of that, a uh, bit of a science geek that's coming out here. But um, <laughs> there was a study that was done all around this idea of the impact that friendship has on success and um, the ways that we get in our own way. And what they did is they took women and um, they had them stand at like an, in a, a hill and they would gauge the difficulty of the ascent, like how hard they thought it was going to be, how long they thought it was going to take them. 
Um, and then they would have that woman to gauge um, a hill when they were with friends. And every single time the women who were with friends, when they were with friends, they gauged the ascent to be less difficult. They were more excited to take on the challenge. They weren't, they, they uh, estimated the, that it would take not as long of a time, right? And so this, this idea of the girlfriend's effect, it, um, it, it naturally boosts your confidence because um, you're surrounded by possibility, you're surrounded by ideas. And it's like what I said at the beginning, the people that you see as role models, they're bringing you along with them as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ooh, yes. I mean, even with some of the women in my circle, including yourself, like you, you just reach these higher levels so much faster because you learn from one another and you see like, I don't like to use failures in a bad way because everyone does. And I hate that because failures are, I encourage people to fail. Yeah, they're opportunities to learn. And like, even when I see a, a girlfriend of mine that's an entrepreneur as well, and they're like, oh, well, this didn't work out for me. And I love to learn from their experience and be like, okay, well, like, why didn't that work? Or like, have them even talk to me about it so that I can, you know, maybe apply that to somewhere in my business or in my life. Because even if you don't have a business, even having girlfriends around is encouraging. And it's, it's not just about having the entrepreneurial girlfriends to support you. Yes. It's, It's just girlfriends in general. We need to just lift each other up. And that's just naturally what happens. I mean, like friend friendships that are formed, uh, it, that just naturally happens. And you're right. It has um, both um, a benefit on the personal side, like in, in life, but also as an entrepreneur, which is super exciting. Um, and so it's really important. I mean, if, if the one, if, if that's the only thing that um, everyone takes from tonight is to just start to build and nurture those relationships and um, that whole concept of primed to play and really get on people's radars, but in a, not in a like self-serving way, in a way that is um, steeped in relationships and building the foundation of relationships. That is, uh, well, collaborations in and of themselves are a massive catalyst. Like um, you can accomplish what it'll take you a year to do in one big, well-coordinated collaboration period, end of story. <laughs> I always say like, like, why take a year to do what you can do in, you know, 30 to 90 days, depending on how long it takes you to pull it together and plan it and such. But um, yeah, no, collaboration is, uh, is where it's at, but uh, it has both, yeah, the personal and the business um, uh, impact, which is, which is awesome. Yes, I love that. So I know we kind of touched on this a little bit, but for someone who's just like not sure where to start with like reaching out with some of their role models or women that they want to connect with and like, how would they do that? How would they go about that with confidence? I think one of the first things that has to happen is in terms of uh, having an idea of what it is that you're doing right for your collaboration and building up your excitement and your belief around what it is that you're bringing to the table, uh, that whole vote yourself in to win, as I said at the beginning, <laughs> you need to vote yourself in to your idea first before you start reaching out because you will have that, that intimidation, that invitation intimidation creeping up, um, getting super clear about what it is that you're bringing to the table, who are the right partners. Uh, they're complementary to the work that you do. They're not competing. Uh, they can benefit from getting in front of that collective audience. Um, so the, the clarity, but also just that conviction of like voting yourself in, knowing that you're bringing massive value to the table to any woman who says yes, and then start reaching out. Um, the biggest piece of the outreach to inviting is both, of course, letting them know what it is that you're doing, uh, but also making sure that uh, it's worded in a way that the benefit to them is super clear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So making sure that there's no 
like foggy <laughs> fogginess in your message like you want to make sure that it's like clear concise like straight to the point so they know exactly what it's about right yeah you're wicked excited about it you clearly communicate the benefit to them and that's going to create a lot of confidence around just the whole inviting like getting the ball rolling in terms of making your collaboration idea a, uh, a reality and I think it's always a good idea to bounce ideas off of people um, one of the biggest mistakes I see in the industry is people who are looking from the outside in they're they're seeing someone like yourself doing a summit they're watching and they decide to do one without um, understanding that there is so much happening behind the scenes like there there are so many moving parts to a collaboration and at the end of the day, a collaboration can either make or break your reputation. And so it's very, very important to just uh, do them. Like, I mean, they are a catalyst, but to go in with eyes wide open. Of course, like before I even thought about doing a summit, I didn't know how much work they are. And just yeah. like getting together like a list of who I wanted to invite in the topics, that in itself was a huge task and and for anyone that's like listening for a summit I was planning that like we're running this right now in uh the beginning of November in 2020 and we were talking about this in the spring of 2020 like like during COVID we were talking about it and then just due to other things happening within the year we had to keep pushing it back and pushing it back but it's like you need several weeks at least to plan everything and get everything ready. So it's, yeah, I, it's I a recommend lot of work. If it's your first kick at the can with collaborations. I recommend giving yourself a good 90 days for the planning and bringing it to life phase. Definitely. Yeah. You can, you can, once you know what you know, right? Cause going in, you don't know what you do, you don't know, but once you know, and you've experienced it, then you can start to fine tune. You can outsource and out task, um, but you got to get through it first. Um, and then you can speed up the process. But yeah, I say a good 90 days for sure. Uh, to, and that's if you're, you know, if you're pretty solid in your idea already. Yeah. One of the things I love to do is just brainstorm ideas around collaborations. There's so many ways that you can, that you can collaborate. Well, I don't even know, like I've lost count on how many collaborations you have put together. So like you are like the queen of putting together collaborations and you have so much confidence with it. Oh, it's one of my favorite, absolute favorite things. It is a, a catalyst to create, to being more successful. Um, I love to strategize um, the whole model of a summit so that it is very rewarding for the summit host, but also to the, for the experts who come out and play. I love it. Um, I love strategizing, like what is the next step, right? Because anytime you create any kind of an offer, um, you want to have that invisible thread of conversation. So you're leading them somewhere and yeah, it's just super fun. So super fun for me. And it's such a, um, it's a strategy that has such big rewards for the entrepreneurs who take them on. And so I love seeing, seeing entrepreneurs taking big leaps. Like why inch along when you can take those big leaps? Of course, of course. Yeah. Well, is there anything else that you would like to add or give another like nugget of wisdom to this conversation? I think I would just reiterate the whole looking um, from the outside in and trying to piecemeal together a summit. It's just, it's just a really bad idea. Um, summits, as, a, as one example, like whatever your collaboration is, they can be such a big catalyst, but there are a lot of moving parts. And so um, going in with eyes wide open, I would just reiterate that whole piece. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. Making sure that you have like all the information and then you have an open mind as well, because um, this did not go exactly the way that I planned. So I had to keep my, my, my mind open about the possibilities of all the outcomes and, and just being able to accept them because you can't plan everything to the exact thing that you want it to be. Like there's going to be something that's going to slightly change or like something's just not going to work. Like, for example, I confirmed all the interviews and then last minute they were like, can we switch the time? There was a screw up. We wrote down the wrong time. And I was like, yeah, we can quickly change this. And I literally changed it the day before the interview. 
And so like, that is just one example that I'm like, okay, wasn't expecting that. And I was just like, no, this is okay. Like, I'm not going to freak out. (laughs) And like, things like this happen, like there's going to be things that come up. Oh gosh. Yeah. Like there's, yeah, there's time changes, there's technology issues, there's all the things. Great. Well, I have loved this conversation so much. I I just love you so much. I appreciate you and all your expertise that you've shared. And you are just like a beacon of light in this world, especially with collaboration, because you are the collaboration queen. (laughs) Thank you. But before we wrap everything up, I would love for you to share the freebie and then the paid offer that you included in the Glow Up Bundle. Sure. So um, in, uh, so the freebie um, for summit attendees that I included is a brand new uh, thing at Brave Her, which is the Brave Her morning makeover is a seven day mini challenge. uh, Because I believe that, um, you know, that whole concept of you uh, begin as though you wish to continue. And just the idea that how you start your day uh, typically will dictate how the day will unfold. And so if you can create a morning routine um, uh, that lifts you up, that, um, sets you up for, um, feeling happy and, um, positive, then that's going to have a ripple effect in your personal life as well as how you show up in business. Um, so super excited about that, that seven day mini challenge, uh, totally free. Um, it's really good. I really love it. (laughs) It's really good. I really love it. Um, And then for the bundle uh, paid product, uh, again, uh, something brand new over at Brave Her, which is uh, Conquer Your Comfort Zone. And it is really, it's a ebook and a journal that is going to guide you from um, your comfort zone into that realm outside of your comfort zone into what, what we're calling the realm of possibility. And so it uh, just takes you by the hand and guides you through ways that you can get out of your own way and really step into what is possible for you. So super excited about that one too. Yes, these are like brand new because you and Kara have like just launched Brave Her at the beginning of October. So like a couple of these um, products that you guys have contributed to the summit are like absolutely new and like no one has ever like seen seen these before before. that's right so like these are pretty exclusive ladies so make sure you go and grab them (laughs) yeah they're awesome I'm very proud of them they're really cool yeah okay so normally that product is $47 but when you get the glow up bundle you pay $47 for that plus 15 other products courses memberships that are worth over $1,800 plus you get all the recordings from the summit, which are priceless. Oh, I'm loving all of the interviews. They're so good. I love them. I absolutely have been loving them. Yeah. And it's not over, (laughs) which is exciting. It's not even over. It's not over yet. (laughs) Exactly. The bundle is just um, off the hook, really like $1,800 in products and programs, $47. Um, even if they, even if a couple of them collected some virtual dust for a little bit, it's so still worth it, right? Even if there's just one, one thing that you want to get your hands on, it's worth it. Like your um, way to slay. That's I've got my eye on that one. <laughs> the way to slay bootcamp. Yes, that the yes. retail value of that is two hundred forty-seven dollars. So even if you just wanted mine you save $200 on that, but then you also get 15 other things. Plus like your conquer your, or sorry, no, that was your freebie. Um, no, it's conquer. Correct. Sorry. I'm mixing them up (laughs) because they're both brave her, but yeah, conquer your mindset. And yeah, like this bundle is just, there's so much value to it. And for any of the women that have been trying to save up $200 for one course, you get 16 of them (laughs) Yes, for $47. Like, if you're really struggling with your finances because of COVID, like this is the time because you get to access them whenever. Yeah. And I mean, you've put together such an amazing um, panel of experts for this, that um, they're all stellar 
like I have like major confidence that every single one of those products and programs are going to be awesome. Oh, they definitely are. I know all the women in this summit and I'm like, I love everything that you guys stand for. And I know all your products and your freebies are just incredible and they just have so much value to them. So I'm so excited for all the women that purchased the bundle. Way to go, Sam. (laughs) Yeah. Okay, ladies. So we are done day four. Oh my gosh. We're like just over halfway the summit. I'm so excited, but thank you, Gina, for joining us, for being a part of the summit taking time out of your schedule to be here and sharing your expertise, the golden nuggets that is your amazing, brilliant brain. Aw, thank you. My absolute pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. I'm so honored to be part of this this, uh, event. Yay. Okay, well, thank you again. And ladies, we are starting day five tomorrow morning with Olivia, and I'm so excited But stay tuned and don't forget to enter for the giveaway. Okay, ladies, I will see you tomorrow morning. Bye. Good night.